Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And as you may be aware, every year towards the end of the year before New Year's Eve, today is the 27th of December 2018, although I doubt you will see this video before 2019. I usually at the end of December I start making uh, Linux command line videos, either uh, having some fun with ASCII art or ASCII, uh, ASCII gadgets or uh, showing how you can make your Linux environment more productive. As you may be aware, I don't really know much about Windows. I've kind of missed the last 15 years of Windows development because I was always in Linux. I really only use Windows for two things. One is for the amazing uh, editor from uh, uh, Tom Brennan. It is the best 3270 emulator out there. If you need to get it, then what you do is you search for uh, Tom, Tom Brennan. Uh, Lista 3270 and uh, run, don't walk to this website and uh, download a a, uh, a trial edition and then uh, pay the 20 bucks, 25 bucks, do yourself that favor because it is just simply an amazing terminal emulator. Uh, not even IBM's PCOM comes close to that. Uh, I just love it. Now, there is a way to also run this terminal emulator on Linux if you install the uh, Linux line. There is a website which emulates the API, so it's not a virtual machine or anything like that, but it emulates the API of uh, Windows, and then you can install and run normal Windows applications on top of uh, Linux at normal speed. The only problem with that, that is uh, if you're running Ubuntu, it's become an almost impossible thing to install. It's become very complex, and I've tried once or twice on my Dell XPS 13 laptops with Ubuntu 1604 and failed. On 1404 I was able to install it in two minutes and since then I don't know what it is they broke but if you want to run Windows, simple Windows applications on Linux it's absolutely possible with Windows Wine but if you run otherwise uh, that's the only reason why I still run Windows and the other reason is that I record uh, video of course with, uh, with uh, my uh, video editing software called, I think it's called, yeah, Wondershare Filmora, and um, and that's what I use for recording and editing video. So that's why I use Windows. Other than that, everything else I do on Linux. So the Linux is important for mainframes because Hercules runs best on Linux. Um, it's just it's just a much better choice to run uh, Hercules. If you don't have a, Hercules, a Linux machine, go get one of those Intel NUX. Um, they're very cheap Intel, and very, very fast. So get yourself one of these. They're like $350. I have probably eight or nine of those. You can build your own little data center with that. They're, they have NVMe disks. You can go up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. And, uh, and then I use them actually as VMware ESX hosts. So then I can have several virtual machines on them. I uh, should have a few of them here. Yeah, here this is one. Uh, you can see here two CPUs. That's an Intel NUC. Uh, with this one is 16 gigabytes of memory. And I have a few of those and uh, and they're fast little demons because they have NVMe disks. And then you can have um, on each one 10, 12 virtual machines and they run plenty fast. So then you install Linux on it. I usually use, I don't want to get into this whole dis discussion of distribution Debian, Red Hat, CentOS, uh, Fedora, all that kind of stuff is not important. Choose one, stay with one, learn how it works, and uh, don't move around that much. So unlike Arc Linux, uh, Arch Linux, some others like Mint, uh, I personally use a lot of Debian and Ubuntu, but to everybody their own. But choose one, stick with it, get to know it well, that's much more important. And, um, and then so, Hercules runs best on Linux for a number of reasons. Uh, channel to channel adapters, uh, the tunnel interfaces come with the Linux networking stack for free. Um, and it works very well on, if you run it on Windows, then you need to go get Hercules. You need to get, buy a product like this to make your Hercules connect to your Windows network through a protocol CTCI to Windows. It's $45 and it's complicated to use and doesn't work with, um, with uh, Wi-Fi cards, only with 
normal internet card, ethernet card. So why even go through the pain? Just just have a Linux machine somewhere and start using that. So that's uh, just saying that Hercules uh, is in its natural habitat when it's on Linux and not even other Unix is Linux. Uh, even Mac OS, everything is a little bit more cumbersome on Mac OS. And I used to run Mac OS a lot in the early 2000s. I always had Mac OS laptops because you have nice user interface, but also uh, power of Unix. But with uh, where stuff is today on Debian or Ubuntu, you don't really need Mac OS anymore. You just buy yourself a laptop that's th three times cheaper than a Mac laptop. I mean, those machines have become ridiculously expensive for ridiculously underpowered machines. And then I have somebody from Apple telling me why the keys fold in a particular way and the aluminum is engineered. And I don't care. All I want to run is applications. Why should I pay $2,000, $2,500 for a machine that doesn't even have, that needs needs a dongle to, to connect USB devices? Give me a break, Apple. It's just, don't, don't fall for that kind of stuff. Just buy yourself a Dell or a Lenovo machine, install Linux on it, it runs fine. Now, never get the latest laptop version. Always get the laptop that's about two years old. They're cheaper, you can get them refurbished from eBay. And uh, Linux will always support things well that are about a year, two years old. Don't get a laptop that just came out yesterday. Um, just saying. Because, you know, and, and they're usually not that much faster, or sometimes not even at all faster. So, I uh, usually get right now, I would have to buy a laptop, I would get like this one still eBay Dell XPS 13937. Uh, that's $650. And compare that and you do the exact same thing you would do on an Apple laptop for $2,800 plus, plus sales tax. So do yourself a favor, go with Linux on slightly older machines. Um, so once you have Linux installed, you want to run Hercules, then there's some tools you absolutely need. Um, first, let's start, we'll start with monitoring. HTOP is kind of important. You need to install with app install HTOP. Um, but it shows you which process is doing what. It also shows you how many CPUs you have and how much memory is defined. The other tool that I use sometimes is Nmon. It shows me what the CPU, but I don't really use it so much to look at CPU, but I use it to look at the kernel stats. How many context switches, in this case 57, that's nothing. Um, I can look at uh, memory much memory is free. It doesn't show me process by process, but it shows me the whole machine. So they're different tools, but both kind of important. Um, then a very important thing is C3270. When you have uh, a mainframe instance that needs a console that never dies, uh, and ZOS is, doesn't like the console to become inactive on it, bad things will eventually happen. So if you have stuff like ZOS running, um, you start a Hercules instance, what I do is I start Hercules instance and then on another screen session I start a C3270 session over local host. Now local host connections never go down because it doesn't even go through the through the Ethernet card or anything like that. So that is never going to go down. As long as the machine is up, this will not go down. And C3270 is just a, an ASCII version of a 3270 emulator. Um, so C3270 you install, of course, also with that install. So, uh, you, do, you can put all in on one line. And on, and then Socat is another one that's related to what we're saying. Uh, Socat. Uh, let me show you. Do the cloud. Oops. Okay, you'll see that I have an hcat command which says anything that comes from port 23 forward to this IP address at port 23. So you can have, we can forward traffic from one IP and one port to another IP and another port. Very handy if you want stuff that comes from the internet 
to a particular public address than going to a private address. This will not do the reverse from private to public because it's a one-to-one -one connection. For private to public, uh, you need something like a network address translation. Uh, okay, this is a recipe that will forward from any operating system on top of Hercules with this addressing scheme to the outside world through my internet interface. So this is from when you have something running inside a, a Hercules mainframe operating system trying to go to the open wide internet. Uh, you also of course need to enable IP forwarding and proxy ARP. So this is, uh, I've seen, shown this before in many other videos. So these are the two ways to gain it. So from, from the outside world to the inside, you use SOCAT and from, from the inside world to the internet, you use network address translation, okay? So those are very important tools. Then, as you know, everything I do is always inside a virtual terminal session. So I usually use probably connect the app. So I usually use screen because I know it well. Uh, okay. Oops, restart. Okay, so screen minus A will start a new session and then control A, control C will, will allow me to, uh, control A, C will allow me to start a new session and control A, P, I can page uh, backwards through all the, all the sessions I have. Now, a lot of people will tell me that uh, a screen is kind of old fashioned and a lot of people use Tmux. Uh, you can do stuff like this with Tmux and vertical spl split. You can also do horizontal split. It's a little bit more modern. You have a status line here. You can give names to sessions, but you can really do all that stuff also with screen. Um, it, there's also another one called uh, Bayobu, which is even more fancy. Uh, does all the stuff that Tmux does, but a little bit more. You have a status line. Gives you up that you can put in the weather there, all kind of information. It doesn't really matter which one you use as long as you use one. So I use screen because I've been using it for 20, sorry, for 20 years and uh, it kind of works for me. And the main benefit from using a virtual terminal session manager is that you know the key bindings. Once you know the key bindings, I don't know if it matters if I use Tmux or screen because I just know the key bindings by heart. Same is by the way with the editor, right? I mean. If I today I have to compare this file to this file, so these two files here, then I would rather use diff results to and result, um, right? And this shows me the result, the differences. Or I would use something like vim results to and then say v split results. And so now I can have them side by side, right? Uh, this is nmap scanning my home internal network telling me where all the virtual machines are i have so many sometimes i have to automate it by scanning with nmap nmap is another interesting tool to use for this purpose um, so uh, vim is is efficient for me because i know the key bindings and i'm very fast on it if you're faster on another editor then god bless uh, i've said in one of my previous videos that um, that uh, Rene Fallon told me it's the world's best editor. So I, I trust him, I believe him. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, so, and I have here a, win a, a window session with all the various tools I like to use. So let's see. So we saw, so, oh, okay. So the file browser. Now, I use Ranger quite a bit because uh, if I have to browse through files, then I can go here. This is, the, of course, the root uh, directory. And then I can go into, let's say, root. And and then I can go. And then on this pane, I have all the 
uh, it, it keeps drilling down. So if, for instance, I want to edit this, then I can just press on it and it opens up in BIM. And then when I close, I'm back here. So there's other tools like this, NNN, triple N is another one, which people will say is a little faster, but my machines are so fast, the Ranger is plenty fast for me. Uh, like, uh, well, it's being opened here, so that's why BIM is complaining, but... Um, an Inscript incantation to transform. I use this sometimes to transform text files into PDFs, especially print files from mainframes. Um, here's a disassembler uh, prints uh, that I converted with Inscript. So, um, this are a ranger is a, is a kind of a fast way. There's another tool like that called Midnight Commander. But because I mapped all blue in my thermal session, well, the blue is mapped into yellow, and that's because um, the blue is not easily visible um, on video. Um, for myself, I still use blue, but so Midnight Commander by default goes to yellow, and people may remember this as Norton Commander. In fact, I, I bought a license of Norton Commander in the 80s. I think I was the only person that I know ever bought license because it was being, everybody copied it and there was the default shell for DOS for uh, on, on MS DOS for me for 10 years uh, and so Midnight Commander kind of by the way Midnight Commander also exists on a uh, Unix on the mainframe on ZOS so I use it there as well uh, so it's a those are kind of cute tools to uh, navigate your file system but again, Ranger installs easily, very easy to use. It's no frills, and it's kind of intuitive. You just, if it's a file you want to edit, you do it like that, and you're done. Okay. Um, now you you may notice that I have a prompt here, which is not the standard bash prompt. Yes, I do change my prompt. I have several prompts. Only at the bottom. Sometimes I use this. So the one that I have right now also updates the title of the window, the party window here, so that I can see how long a host has been up, how many users, what the load average is. Um, there's several prompts. You can just go and search for crazy bash prompts out on the on the internet with your browser and then copy paste one. They all work fine. PS1 is the prompt. Right? I like to have multi-line prompts for a simple reason that it gives me more space here to write very long commands but uh, whatever rocks you boat let's see what other tools I use um, I will spoke about Vim <coughs> of course you should be if you do any work on Linux you should be very familiar with this set and gawk regular expressions because they save so much time if you want to if you have a file I don't know let's take on results dot so I want every sentence that every time it says scan, I want to make it into scan so I can pay SCD substitute scan for scan. Okay. And and then I can do cat results. As you can see here, now scanned, all the scans I can do is Yes, we scan, as President Obama famously said. Um, you can do all kinds of transformation. You should know a little bit about regular expressions because they make things for you much, much faster. You can also do it from Win. Um, you can also have, and then you can say, So you can do it also inside Vim. Uh, Vim supports all regular expressions, which stuff like Nano, I don't think it even does. Um, so don't waste, get yourself a nice editor. Uh, by the way, VS Code also works nicely on Linux, but there's a difference between running Linux, like, such as I do here, to run a uh, Linux instance and running Linux on your laptop. So things like VS Code will run well if you run it on your laptop. 
uh, or your PC, but if you connect to a Linux instance, some of those tools make no sense. Um, then uh, enter is a very important thing. But uh, let's say you have, you create some, you want to edit it. Ah. Okay, let's, let's say you have an HTML director where you've developed some HTML. And now you want to say that every time that an HTML file is changed, reload browser or something like that, right? Or in my case, I'll say echo hello. Okay. Uh, and now I can go and every time oh, I'm not inside screen. That's why you want to be inside screen. Okay, so where am I? Enter echo hello. Okay, so now I go to, into different window and go into HTML and I say touch uh, VI machine. And I will get triggered. So this will trigger enter every time that something changes, then you can. So enter is just a way to wait for something to happen. And when that something happens, when there's output from the previous command, it will trigger something, whatever you want it to do. And so it's a, I use it, for instance, to automatically create PDF files from output on uh, on our MBS uh, uh, Moshix mainframe in the cloud. Uh, there's other things you can do with it, but uh, there's uh, excellent web pages for Enter. Mm. Then, of course, some of the um, productivity tools. So you don't need, if I need to just do some uh, spreadsheet work, I just invoke S S SC. SC is a venerable old tool that implements spreadsheet in ASCII. So you never have to leave your terminal. You don't have to buy a license from Microsoft for Excel or any of that kind of that stuff. Uh, it just, uh, you can just do your spreadsheet work here. Uh, if I need to do any calendar work, I use CalCurse. Uh, it uses the Vim binding. So as you can see here, if you check this window here, uh, just with J and K, I can go up and down. So it uses all the star, normal Vim bindings to navigate. Control G brings it to present day, which is December 27, and then you can add uh, you can add uh, appointments and stuff like that. So um, I use that extensively. Um, then, of course, for all text editing, I use Vim. And if you use email on the command line, which I do. I'm using a tool which used to be called Pine, but they then renamed it Alpine, which connects to my Google email boxes. But Alpine is just an amazing email tool. Uh, I'm so used to it, I know all the command, uh, command bindings by heart. Uh, it can connect to Gmail or Yahoo or anything. And then everything is stored on um, uh, text files, which are easy to handle. I can grep them, etc. I can run regular expressions through them, and uh, and that's how I've been doing emails, and I have backed up on them for many, many years back, at least 20, 23, 24 years. I also use um, Alpine together with the Google Drive file system mount Linux. So if you have a Google account, you have Google Drive, and then I actually mount it as a file system on my uh, on my Linux machine so then I can use it for backup because Google will back it up and I will never lose anything and so if you follow some of these instructions there are several ways to skin this cat but choose one mount it and then what I do is I actually store my Alpine email files 
on the Google Cloud. So I don't actually use the Google emailing client uh, at all. I use, my, I use Alpine, but I do use Google as the backend to store the files. And so they're backed up. I don't have to worry about it. There's strong security is implemented, etc. cetera. Um, but Alpine is an amazing, it's amazing tool. It's simple, it does its job, it's extremely fast. And, uh, and it can uh, connect to any modern email system. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to show is Visidata. If you have Visidata, an amazing tool. I don't know how, why not more people are using it. It's an open source tool. You can open uh, Excel's, uh, CSV files, even uh, stuff on the internet. You can use tables and then visualize those tables and look at them and compare them, work with them, save them, transform them. If you work with a lot of spreadsheets, do yourself a favor and install busy data. It's unbelievable. Um, so we showed, okay, so then the other thing I just forgot to show is IO top. If you have heavy IO workload on your Linux instance and you don't know who is the culprit, who is reading and writing a lot, then you run IO top. It will show you which process is writing at that particular moment. So this is for IO on disk and if you know you have a lot of, uh, or you want to know what's going on, on the network side, you install Beamon and this will show you who's writing, what's going on, how much traffic is uh, going in and out and uh, and you can have a detailed understanding. There used to be a tool called Ethereal but it became a, a closed uh, tool that you have to pay for. It used to be even better than this but now it's, you can, you can actually stay on uh, what is it? Let's see if we can find it. Um, well, Wireshark, of course. Yeah, it used to be Ethereal, but this is, see, 2004. And then and the tool has changed its name. I used to love this tool on Linux because you could see everything. Uh, Ubuntu Ethereal. Yeah, it's all, as you can see, old stuff. Uh, so now it's called Wireshark. So app install Wireshark. Oh, 246 megabytes of stuff for, I don't know what went wrong in the last 15 years. I mean, we used 240 megabytes for installing one tool. It used to be kind of a lot 15 years ago and still is. I mean, look at this. It's going to take me a minute or so just to install it. And this is a fast machine with a fast connection. I mean, uh, it, it wasn't as bad. I don't know what even my Chrome browser uses right now. I think, let's see. Okay, 400 megabytes. And I have like two, three web pages open. I mean, what is wrong? Why do I need 400? My Filmora, 512 megabytes. Look at Putty. Putty uses three megabytes. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Even Notepad, 1.8 megabytes. I don't understand. Anyway, so Wireshark. Ah, he wants to open an X display. Yeah, it used to be an ASCII only tool. I don't know. I mean, they went wrong. So. For now, I think it's just uh, beam on if you want to monitor your network. Now, let's also have a little bit of fun stuff um, with uh, with Linux, uh, which I typically at the end of the year start to play with ASCII games. So the first uh, one is uh, if you connect to Telnet, Towel, if you with by, if you connect with Telnet to Towel of Blinking Lights, dot NL, which stands for Netherlands, see what happens. Okay. Twentieth century, not Fox, but twentieth century text. A long, long time ago, in a galaxy far. Star Wars. So somebody went here and did a huge effort in writing Star Wars for ASCII. This is all ASCII. <laughs> As you can see here, we have the cursor here. 
and uh, you have to kind of bear with it for a minute or so, but the yeah, results are amazing. Uh, last year on uh, New Year's Eve, I set up a, a Ubuntu instance in the cloud and uh, people could connect to it with Telnet and uh, with a guest account, guest guest, and then they were presented an ASCII menu and they could choose either watching uh, Star Wars uh, or they could uh, watch some other interesting stuff which I'm going to show you now which I think is better than just having a, a a server out there where people some people don't even know Telnet anymore how funny is that? Uh, people don't say what do I have to do with Telnet? what is that? Um, get out of this Windows stuff people I mean, Windows is bad for your brain It's here, and Darth Vader is here. This is Darth Vader. And now he's looking for R2-D2. <laughs> Where are you? Um, oh, here he is. Beloved R2-D2, which in recent years in Star Wars became round. Isn't that cute? All of this had to be done by hand. The whole movie's there. Um, so, again, if you want to go there, you do Telnet. Towel, the blink lights, then an L. Now, maybe during the slow days of end of the year, maybe you want to uh, show this to your family or if you have kids. Another interesting thing I always show is ASCII query. Kids love that. Just like adults, you can stare at this for hours. I have some modifications made to mine, so the randomness has changed a little bit. Some kids prefer. There's a whale, sometimes there's a lock nest. They want to show you this a little bit more often, so I change the random generator to show it more often. Put the name of kids here sometimes into the castle, and they love that. And if you look at it, there's all kinds of activity here in the sea. There's some big fish, but there's also other interesting stuff. Maybe we'll get to see one. There's a frigate, I think. Oh, here it is. <laughs> I don't think that's a whaler, I think that's a frigate. Um, and uh, some other interesting stuff, that's cute, very relaxing. I sometimes leave this open on laptops when, I, when I'm in the airport lounge because I travel a lot and I always have a Linux laptop with me because that's how you kill hours during flights. And then I leave this open, go to the restroom and almost always somebody's coming up to me and tell me, oh, that's nice, how do you do that? So that's one thing I showed him. Let's leave it running for a little bit longer. In fact, I'm going to take a snip, snipping tool so that I can put this as the as the uh, and so now this is going to go as the as the screenshot for the video itself that you're watching. Save as uh, fish tank. That's it. This is going to be go. This is what you're going to see now when you see this video on YouTube. Uh, so this is still running. So let's get out of this. And another thing I show very often is a tool called Hollywood. You can install with apt install Hollywood. And and then you run this tool. And have you ever seen those movies where like spy movies or uh, space? like science fiction stuff where somebody's running a terminal it's usually like a young hack or something and there's a ton of activity on this on the screen nothing makes sense but it looks great so somebody did and programmed that it's called hollywood and i can see it here because i'm connecting remotely but if it was running my laptop there's also the mission impossible music is playing in the back end dum 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 da 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 Dun, 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 dun. So imagine that playing in the background, and, uh, and so that's what I do. I leave it open on my laptop, go to the restroom, come back. There's going to be almost always one or two people watching the monitor. Uh, it's a great way to start a conversation. Uh, and each time you run it, it's going to be a, a little different. Sometimes you have more windows, sometimes you have less. They keep changing also. So uh, you will enjoy this a lot. Um, it's a great way to get people say what is this thing and then you tell them well, I'm trying to save the world from Dr. No uh, so each time you yeah, 
You have to play with it a couple of times until you like. This one I like because it has one, two, three, four times uh, four, so 24 screens. That's a perfect, perfect, perfect way. Some stuff works well, some doesn't, so here it's not able to display. Here it is able to display, but this looks perfect. You have the matrix thing going on here. You have, I don't know what that tool is. These are all tools that actually exist on the Linux system. Each one is a tool that does something. So, kind of find it fascinating. Maybe take a snipping tool of that also. Windows snip. Save it as Hollywood. Okay. So uh, we looked at the prompt to look at some fun tools. There's more stuff you can do. There's a train in ASCII. By the way, there's um, a whole. Uh, if you have the VLC uh, uh, video player, VLC save as ASCII. Uh, any movie uh, that you can play in VLC can be saved as ASCII. Uh, convert videos into ASCII text using VLC player. So that's another great way you take any video you have, any movie, and you can save it as a VLC. Huh? What just happened? World War Z. So let's see how this comes out. Yeah, you just save it as ASCII, and then you play it. It looks a little weird, but the kind of cool effects, I like it. So you can recognize some stuff. So another way to do it, there's a, there's a tool called Kinnik on GitHub. And that also out of movies, it makes uh, It makes uh, ASCII uh, videos out of uh, in ASCII out of uh, out of uh, movies or videos. So um, those are fun tools. And then let's see what else we have here. Uh, oh, ASCINEMA. So ASCINEMA is a great tool because um, if you have ASCINEMA, let me show you in a web browser. It's a tool to record sessions in ASCII and then make them into uh, videos, but those videos are actually replaying the ASCII itself. It's not really a video recording. And then you have to go to the website, skinema.org, and then whenever you upload them, they will be visible to everybody. So here, for instance, is a session where everybody records it. Is dev stats. That's what it really is. It records um, terminal command line sessions and makes it easy for people to play back. You can play it back everywhere. Um, if you have an account, they will be stored under your Username, I have an account here on, on uh, Askinema. It's still extremely simple to just, it's almost like a shell. You invoke Askinema and then you do your regular work. And when you're done, it records it as a file. And of course, that file is going to be very small because all it really is is ASCII. You can compress it down to nothing. And then you can share with people by, uh, by putting them up here. Sometimes people play games here and record them. Uh, Uh, let's play this. Somebody's playing Worm, I think. By the way, Worm also exists on the on our mainframe. If you connect to the Moshix TSO mainframe, you start Worm from the command line, you can play that same game on uh, on a 3270 emulator. So this is all there really is. It just records, but it's a great tool. If you want to have some fun with ASCII, I, I just love everything that's ASCII. And uh, that's why I do it. So, other than that, <coughs> of course, you should have your build tools. I use the GCC compiler for C, but uh, Clang, some people say Clang is better. Uh, if you do a lot of C compiler, then you want to have C tags, of course, uh, which tags everything in C so you can search it within uh, Vim and have autocomplete and stuff like that. Uh, but Vim itself already recognizes a lot of. Uh, uh, source code formats. 
and that's about it so these are some of the tools that we use um, um, calcurs again i explained so cat very important of course you should know you said and your gawk and all those kind of tools um it's text to pdf is a great tool i have here uh, this bigger so text to i have here a configuration file which says put everything in legal format landscape yes and draw a border around it and then you can just take any uh, let's remove all the pdf okay so now i can say text to pdf and i have the pdf files here you see and those are good quality pdfs uh, they look great um, i can move one over here uh, command so by the way if you have the windows 10 reasonably up to date uh, then you have a now ssh and scp clients installed so i can say uh, root It's not able to move them. I don't know. I had this in the past. There's something wrong. Something is wrong with this SCP. Can I move this PDF? I think it's because the name is too long. So if I if I change it like this, let's say copy. To into uh, output PDF. And I try this again now, and I can say output PDF. Okay, so now we should be able to go here and desktop prints. Where is the prints directory? Ah, oh, here it is. So now I can open this, and you can see this is a Herc01 output file. That's a PL1 program compile. Looks great, doesn't it? I like the border around it. Looks kind of like the printouts on IBM 3800 laser printers and from the mid 80s. A little bit, not exactly the same, but very similar. Um, so, um, text to PDF will do that for you. Uh, so you don't have to buy the license from uh, although her uh, fish's uh, hurt print is considerably nicer but uh, the, the lesson here is you have in the command line you have ssh i can do okay so you can see here now if i launch midnight commander that's how in that commander looks in reality because i'm using the built-in uh, SSH client of uh, Windows 10, which doesn't have it mapped to yellow. But uh, that's a Windows command I want to show you before. If I go to prints, I can open this file here. I can say edit. Okay, so and now it opens Vim, or I can say just view, and then I can do quit. Um, so some people like Midnight Commander better. Again, the uh, the command is MC, Midnight Commander. Some other people like Ranger. So that's it. Um, I gotta go to work, but I just wanted to show a little bit of command line stuff in Linux. Do yourself a favor and do your Hercules stuff. If you're serious about it, you mainframe stuff from Linux. It's just a much better environment. It doesn't reboot on its own. One of the big problems I have with Windows 10 is it just decides when to reboot on its own. Yes, I can know I can go and change some of the settings, but eventually it will still insist on rebooting. Why does Microsoft decide when it reboots for me? And why does it just just reboot, kill everything, 
kill every program that's running, you can lose work. Is I mean, I don't understand what's wrong with these people. Why do you decide when to reboot my machine? Who gave you? Who gave Microsoft permission to decide when they can reboot my machine? I don't want them to do it. And still, you can disable as much as you want. Eventually, you will do it. And that's just brain dead, guys. I mean, don't don't give in to that. Don't let consumer companies such as Apple or or uh, or uh, or Microsoft control your destiny. There's no reason why you should buy a laptop from from uh, Apple for two thousand eight hundred dollars, which doesn't even you need a dongle to connect USB devices, and it's and it's slower and and worse than using just buying like a two year old Dell or Lenovo laptop or whatever you want to buy. I don't really care. Um, you know, just because some designer called Ive is telling me in a beautiful video at Apple how the springs and the keys work. Whoever bought a computer based on the springs on, on the keys? Uh, don't spend money just to go with the fashion. So, end of my rant. Uh, so this is uh, how I work. This is how I rock and uh, it works for me and uh, very stable environments. I'm very productive. Most of the stuff I do is just uh, emulators, either SimH for OpenVMS or Hercules for mainframe related topics. I also have a uh, Multix emulator, a couple of stuff I just like, uh, retro software, retro computing, and uh, and that's the way I do it. Some just some of the tools. Anyway, I wish you a very happy new year. Uh, let's have a great 2019 together. Uh, even though you're probably going to watch this movie, uh, this video at the beginning of 2019. Thank you for being such faithful viewers. We have over 1,300 subscribers on this channel and it's growing by the day. This is an amazing community. I'm so happy to be associated with you uh, folks, as well as people like uh, Professor Oni Fanon and other friends I've made. A wonderful, wonderful community. And thank you all for forming a community uh, around this amazing software. And, systems that we learn from every day of course also thank you ipm and thank you deck and all the others for making amazing software available to us uh, 30 40 years ago anyway all the best to you best wishes thank you and goodbye